questions for you, and I'm sure that they will be more than happy to answer any questions you have about the range and about the, um, the non other nonprofits that they support during the depression. So our presenter tonight is Kendall Holden. He is a 16-year member of the Grange and is presently the overseer, otherwise known, vice president of the Grange at the local, county, and state levels. And he worked in Chittenden County as a teacher for four years. And he's going to be taking time tonight about the fair before the fair. So I will turn this over to Kevin. Thank you, Anne. She uh, asked me if I, some time ago if I would like to present some information about the fair before the Champlain Valley Fair. And I said, okay. And then she said, oh, by the way, there was a fair before that. Oh, well, we can talk about that. All right. And then when I read the blurb she had about what this meeting was tonight, she also said that you're going to be presenting something about the Grange itself. Says, so oh, okay. <laughs> so here we go. Um, you've been staring at 1920, the fair here in Essex Center, probably in its, its heyday. It's next to the last year of being uh, held by the Grange itself. Um, you can see the cars are up there near the, the track. You get the people right up there lining the track. You'll see several different angles of this picture as we go through the slides. So if you go down a bit, now, this, we're going to give you a little bit of whiplash. Um, this building was apparently built on the old fairgrounds in Burlington when they were housing some military personnel. And they think this is the only building that is left from that era. Uh, it's on, I can't even read it there, but it's, it's 150, does it say there? 153 Park Street. 153 Park Street. It's apparently the only building still standing that had anything to do with that era. Barracks from the War of 1812. Yep. Now if we move Back up. other way, other way. Here's a map of Burlington, and I, I think we've got the lake over here. We've got Battery Park here, and here are the fairgrounds in Burlington. If you go to the next picture, It's slightly larger, and it was at one point called the Chittenden Agricultural Society Fairgrounds. Um, there were, I think, stables around here, the reviewing stands, and there's some more information about that. Uh, the old fairgrounds, defined by North Avenue, North Street, Pitkin Street, Manhattan Drive, and Blodgett Street marks the site of the old Chittenden County Fairgrounds. This was uh, published by the Free Press January 10th, 1878. Um, it's sold in 1858 and 1859 at less than $200 per acre. Uh, used for fairs, horse trots, caravans, other large outdoor gatherings. Under this ownership, the ground was fenced, seats were erected, stalls for animals uh, provided, and there were cheap buildings put up, it says here. Provide very unprofitable property for the owners. Um, during the Civil War, the government used this ground for military purposes. It, it talks about all the different groups that were there, several large buildings being built there, and we have this one remaining. Um, in 1866, Lemuel Drew sold the fair property described as supposed to contain 21 acres more or less to the Chittenden County Agricultural Society for the sum of $10,000. But there were some problems. I think in one source I read, they were having, I think, a race. And it was raining and people crowded into one central area and the, this stands collapsed. In a half hour, they had them fixed and they were back up and running again. But... <laughs> No. <laughs> Society, okay. Elevated seats at some fair in the fall of 1867. They became so much involved in liabilities for damages for personal injuries, it was, went out of existence. And Mr. Drew, in the spring of 1868, obtained the final property back on a foreclosure. So 
There was one article I did find, it was a long one, about the, all the different uh, prizes that were given out for all the different you know, categories you want to think of. So they may, may not have been profitable, but it was a good, they had a good run of trying to present things, uh, have um, prizes and so forth. So, it says with the turn of the century, okay, good. So in 1913, members of Essex Center Grange, number 155, organized a fair committee, Mr. and Mrs. C.H. Nichols, Mrs. G.D. Harvey, Mr. and Mrs. Ayers, and the chair, Mr. McAllister, determined the first fair would be one day, one day only, and the town hall, memorial hall, this hall, would be the, where they would show off flowers and crafts. Um, it housed exhibits, fruits, vegetables, fancy work. Local horsemen laid out a half mile trek in a large field by Towers Road. The space provided to exhibit cattle. First fair held in 1914 and a net profit of $286.58. In 1915, the Grange rented additional land from Mr. Chapin for $100 and the fair expanded to two days. And it was so successful, the, Grange, the State Grange lecturer gave them a $10 gold piece. Now the State Grange lecturer is what be like a program director. In our Grange, lecturer is a program director. They might lecture, they might provide you with some recreation and some inspiration. That's, that's the program that lecturers do. So this was at the state level. Um, became more sophisticated in 1917. They went from a fair committee to establishing offices of the county, Chittenden County Fair. Okay, three, four. It's kind of interesting. There was a, uh, when, well, I haven't got there yet. Let's go to this. So here is, again, it talks about, it says here, Essex Center in 1913. Well, I just read it, it says 1914. In 1913, they decided to do this. In 1914, they actually put it on. So that's, again, there's lots of these panoramic views. And I'm wondering how many of you have seen a panoramic camera in action? How many of you have seen a person over here wind up over there as well? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was still happening in the 50s and 60s when I was in, in uh, 4-H. We were down at the Watt Waterman building in Burlington, and that's what they do. They have fun doing that. So here is a panoramic view. Again, not great, but it's a picture of a picture, and it's over in the Powell Museum. If we move on, we get a very bad picture. I don't know why I did that. Began as a Grange activity, so we'll move on. And there again is another iteration of the picture you saw earlier that you've been staring at for about a half hour. And some of you have been pointing out areas that I wouldn't know. A muddy lot in the center of town, that pops up a lot. Apparently there's clay there. And it was hard for the horses to run, hard for people to walk. And that was one reason why it, the fair was eventually moved to its present place. Okay. Oh, well, that's dark. Huh. The, uh, that, now, this, this is Essex Junction. Over here is the racetrack. Back here probably would be the present grandstands. That, that looks better on the computer than it does on the screen, but not a lot. Okay, let's try another one. And this one again, well, we're back to Essex Center. So let's go some more. Forget that. And some of you were talking about the railroad. And the railroad did come through it. And Linda Sanderson, you were talking about where it was. Yeah, it's over here. Okay. And so you can see Burlington, Winooski, Essex Junction, uh, Cambridge, Cambridge Junction, Jeffersonville, North Underhill, Underhill, Jericho, all being served by that railroad and people coming to the fair that way. So the, and they had whopping fares, what were they? 50 cents, something like that. So again, can it be read here better? Nope, okay, 15 cents in some cases. Yeah. Yep. From Essex Junction to Essex Center is 15 cents. Wow. 
Okay. All right. And next. Can I come up a little more? This was uh, written up about the first fair. Despite the elections, whatever that's about, the fine weather and still better attractions at the Chittenden County Fair drew nearly 2,000 people Tuesday to the fairgrounds of Physic Center, which is considered a pretty good record for the opening day. The exhibit, exhi exhibitions of fruits and vegetables are exceptionally good, and those of home and shop work products evoked much favorable comment. The numerous Entries of prize cattle, swine, and poultry drew many spectators. J.W. Dana, the county agent, will supervise the judging stock. The mounted drill by G Troop of the 2nd Cavalry from Fort Ethan Allen provided plenty of thrills. A ball game between teams from Underhill and Essex Center, which was won by the former by a score of says 12 to 8, I think, was the chief attraction of the morning. I thought there was more there. Okay, let's go on. Now this is in 2017. Popular from its initial holding six years ago, the Shinton County Fair has grown in the esteem of the public and the annual event to be held at Essex Center on September 9, 10, 11, and 12 promises to be given record attendance. More still promises to be the best fair ever held in the same grounds. Professor E. W. Braley, principal of the Essex Junior High School, will have charge of the girls and boys exhibit. He's giving much of his time to making this display the largest and best ever seen in the state. Teachers and pupils are requested to take interest in this display. Full information regarding this prize and so on will be written. Can contact him at the center. Horticultural Hall, this place, will be in an interesting and attractive place. The exhibits will be far more extensive than ever, and every product of the farm and the handicrafts of the housewife will be shown. No entry fees are charged for exhibits in this department. A special attention is given to the exhibit of purebred cattle. In fact, the cattle, horses, swine, sheep, and poultry departments will be large and of the highest class. There will be good trotting by good horses each day of the fair. Okay. And that's the same thing. I don't know why I did two, but just keep going. It's the same thing. A little larger, that's all. Now here's another picture of the Champlain Valley Fair, a little better. Again, you can see the racetrack. I would expect the grandstand would wind up here. Okay. Little blurb for the public. Okay. Now, this is 1920, back up here. You can see that there are some buildings. Like roof here, roof there, I think some back here. Lots of tents. And a Ferris wheel. Yeah. yeah. Up and coming. You people should be over here. Okay, you want horses? There, they, There's a horse. Again, it started in 1890. It says here the Grange was started in 1893. Early center of social activities in the community with dances, picnics, and dinners held there. Sponsoring a fair was a major undertaking for the group. Horse racing occurred at a half mile track laid out by a, on a large field along Towers Road. Julia Fifield, who attended the fair, recalls this was the prime attraction for the men folk. Okay, and you can see the cars lined right up against the racetrack. Crazy, okay. Now this, this is the last of the slides, and some, I think Deb mentioned this earlier as we were looking at the first picture, is these people in 1916 having a picnic at the fair. Uh, it says here, the Grange hosted the fair until 1921 when it sold to the Champlain Valley Fair because the soil of fairgrounds is poor, the fair was increasing in size, and the site was not centrally located. The Grange used the money to fix up its hall, here are the people picnic at the Essex Fair, Essex Center, 1916. What grabbed me was their attire. Yeah. You go to the fair, to, fair this year, or probably, and you'd probably be faint seeing what's there. there. This, I, I, I can understand the ladies in dresses, it's, but the men in suits. Oh, men in suits. Ties. Ties even, yes. 
it was an event. You're absolutely right. Before there was, they got into Essex Junction, though, there was this little article uh, to the editor from W.F. Chapin. Apparently, a man by the name of John Goff was not too excited about the fair being located in Essex Junction. Uh, talking about the Winooski Bridge, how people would get there. And Chapin says, I think the people of the county generally understands the fair that was held at Essex Center was started by a local grange and managed and financed by them, at first as a grange fair and later assuming more of the attitude of a county fair. As a trustee of Essex Center Grange and one of the promoters of the fair, I wish to say that the grange have paid for buildings and material necessary for conducting a fair, $7,000 besides what work had been previously done, been done on the track. Um, and he goes on to say that there were this discussions about moving the fair. And in regard to Mr. Goff's question, what is the Essex exit location but a sand blow? Hmm. I have lived in the town of Essex for 50 years and do not remember ever seeing a sand blow on the proposed site for a fairground. But on the contrary, I have seen fair, fair crops of corn, potatoes, hay, and grain grown and harvested there. As a resident of Essex Junction, I admit the town has a little sand, but I think it fully, as fully as desirable, and that was just uh, too much guff. Yeah. So, so in 1922, the fair was held at this location because the racetrack was not ready down in the junction. So. There is that. I don't know how much more about the fair we can run into. We'll go, I'm going to get into some stuff now. Yeah, it was a one day event. Yep, did that, did that, did that. Okay. The Grange, no. Let's take a look at the Horticultural Hall exhibits. Horticultural Hall was a place of beauty and many present said that such a showing of fruit had not been on exhibition at any fair held during the fall. There were over 300 exhibits, 36 varieties coming from Shelburne Farms, taking 12 blue ribbons. The exhibit of vegetables was also large. Flowers are there in profusion and other displays included fancy work from all parts of the county, butter and cheese and maple products. The school exhibit in charge of the superintendent of schools, Miss Minnie Hayes, was worthy of special mention. Besides the general schoolwork, the display showed products of the agricultural and manual training departments. Yep. Okay. Now, I don't know much more about the fair than that, except that I'm amazed that the Grange did that, pulled it off. They did a good job but it just became too large and in the wrong place. So it got moved. Um, all right, any, any questions or observations for people in the know? So I'm sure some of you may have different, remember? yes sir. Ah. All the panoramic stuff from 1917 to like 1955. Yep. So McAllisters are everywhere. All the soldiers at the fourth. Hey, that sounds familiar. I'm kind of guessing that maybe he was involved with the fair because his dad was basically doing it up here mm -hmm. in the town. Might have been the first thing. Um, okay. Sounds reasonable. And we do have some willies here, and uh, that'd be interesting if they. I don't know how much John knows about Giles. His Great-grandfather grandfather sold the land in the village from mm -hmm. the Willie Farm that um, became the yes. fairgrounds, and there's some very interesting stories about how that all took place. Yep. Anybody hear, hear about a dancing bear? About a dancing, dancing bear. Dancing bear. Bear. I didn't hear about it, but I, I swear there's a, a, a lady lion up in Underhill, Jericho, actually, who says some, some guy by the name of Steigles, and Steigles is a good name in Jericho, had a dancing bear, and I just wondered if anybody here had ever heard about that. Yes. Yes, sir. I certainly have heard of it. I think I have even seen pictures. Um, he lived in the house 
at one time where um, JCAD is now. And the little sand they use, I think, for smoking or something out front was where he sold, you know, food, mm -hmm. roadside stand. And one of the things he sold was soda. And they used to tell about how you know, they give a bottle of soda to the bear, and the bear would drink the soda out of the bottle. <laughs> and he also, the bear was trained so he would sit in the car with him. You'd see the right number of the bear sitting in the car. <laughs> course, he started out up in Pleasant Valley, he actually had a circus. And there was another house on Route 15 at the corner of Packard Road that they was like, they're all gone now, but one time there was a, a circle of six big pine trees. Mm -hmm. And that was where he held his circus at one time. That was the, the ring for the circus. I'll be darned. No, yeah. I hadn't heard that. Yes, sir. Oh, just holding the mic. Yep. Yes. All right. For a history of the uh, the Grange itself, of course, the Grange has, I say, 1893. It was formed. Some activities were rummage sales, food sales, flea markets, picnics, trips, bowling, card parties, dinners, and bingo. Bingo was one of their with their major fundraiser. Hall was built by the Universalist Society in 1859, cost of $1,200. Sold at Essex Center Grange. October 31st, 1901, at a cost of $400. Uh, okay. Let's get you some idea about the character and the, the, the people themselves. Um, Essex Center Grange in 1895 don donated a street lamp to Essex Town in 1895. After the usual opening of a short recess was declared, during which the secretary noticed the ladies spent most of their time visiting with those of the opposite sex. <laughs> they also voted in that year to establish the price of 25 cents for opening, closing, sweeping the hall, making the fire, and cleaning the lamps. It's a princely sum. Lectures program in 1905. Which is a greater benefactor to humanity? The woman who leaves nothing undone in her home duties, devoting all her time to them, or the one who neglects some of her duties and helps someone around her that needs help. That would have been an interesting discussion. <laughs> Literary program, 1912. Are automobiles a benefit or a damage to the people of this country? In 1912, in August, the Grange decided to have a B Wednesday to shingle the Grange Hall roof. Ladies were asked to furnish refreshments at that time. Price of the roof was $33.60. I mentioned here again in 1914 that C.A. Harvey, treasurer from the fair committee, delivered that $286.58. Discussion, debate, resolve that the country offers more and better opportunities for the average boy than does the city. Hmm. Discussion in uh, 1916. Is it true that women talk too much and it's equally true that men eat too much? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. This is 196. Well, we'll make a, a time warp ahead here. Nine, oh, here, yeah, 1960, February. Green Mountain Corp. Corporation electric bill of two dollars and eighty-six cents. In 1960, there was a degree team consisting of Ann Bergeron, Isla Crowley, Genevieve Millari, and a bunch of other names that aren't on there. But Ann is there. Probably. Do you want to still Probably. Yeah. <laughs> And in 1960, Ann Bergeron was crowned National Youth Princess in Salem, North Carolina, where she took the seventh degree. Yeah. Sister gave an interesting report. You think they could have done better than an interesting report. <laughs> mm -hmm. I find this kind of interesting. Sister Crowley reminded members that the Crowleys were in the insurance business and that one of their sons joined in with them. Okay. 
later on a bunch of Crowleys do join. Anything else? Discussion of pennies in the switch box. There is no particular danger where they are located, but it's thought best to have the master contact Green Mountain Power Corporation see about a new switch box or some means of use without the pennies being present. Probably a good idea. In 1963, there was apparently a loss of records. Well, that's too bad. Among candidates for the third and fourth degree obligations was Lawrence Yendo, Jr., 1963. Hmm. The Grange voted to have a special meeting for the purpose of conferring degrees on Governor and Mrs. Hoff at his convenience. Suggested a youth team put on the second degree. And that... August and September, that actually happened. Anyone remember the Tenelians? Yep. Okay. He was, since Charles was installed as assistant steward, Leona as lady assistant steward, Mary Bergeron elected matron of Essex Center Grange, Juvenile Grange, now Juvenile is junior, from ages 5 to 13, 13 and a half. And some oddball by the name of Kendall Holden was installed as master in 1977. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somewhere here, there's a some more info. Again, this Anne got me all this stuff. Woo! Okay, there, there is more somewhere. I hope. That somewhere. I am supposed to have a list of things to do, to do. Here it is. No. They did. That was way back. Way back. And I have apparently gone by that. But yeah, the, the place didn't have a cellar and they, they made it. Things that they accomplished in 19, between eight, 19, well, 1981 through 1993. Siding installed, they replaced the furnace new front door, installed the elevator, rewired the downstairs, installed suspended ceiling downstairs, remodeled kitchen, painted throughout, installed new fans, installed ventilating fans downstairs, new bingo card cabinet. Anybody go to bingo there? The air was, the air was blue. Yeah. <laughs> you could barely breathe. And they finally put in smoke eaters and fans that actually vent out to the outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, you stunk when you got home. Uh, painted floors, installed new lights. Plans to complete that didn't happen. Handicap accessibility. Well, we, got the, we got the elevator, but still there's no ramp to get anywhere into that building. Uh, wanted to have the roof painted. Interior decorations complete. Replaced windows on kitchen exterior. Somewhere there was... What is it about all the plans of mice and men and something goes haywire? I was sure this was a paper that had the list of, well, somewhere there is a list of, of past masters. And it goes up through, here it goes. Uh, let's see. Well, 1959, we'll start there. Byron Bentley. Then William Ledoux, Harold Irish, Byron Bentley again, Wayne Richmond, Stanley Gokey, Charles Tenelian, Alan Westcott, Larry Ender Jr., Insula Rich, Kendall Holden, Elmer Bogue, Isla Crowley, Roger Bogue, Elmer Bogue, Linda Sanderson, Harold Cross, Susan Bowles, Harold Cross, that was September 1992. I don't recall who it came after Harold besides myself. I did become master again, and then... Mr. Pelkey became master. And I don't recall the date that we actually closed Essex Center Grange. We couldn't get members to come. We couldn't get new members. Um, couldn't get traction. So we did close the hall. And some of us joined Blue Spruce. Questions? And you have it? What? Yeah. Excuse me? Who wants? Who Lester Pelkey. Lester Pelkey. Uh, back a while, quite a while back, uh, 
when we, lo we lost the bingo because the backyard bingo in Essex Junction was giving out greater prizes and we lost whatever clientele we had and we lost our income. So what could we do? Well, we wound up selling the, the building to Lester Pelkey and we survived on the money coming in from that for some time. But eventually that had to dry up as well. So Lester owns the building. Do you have anything to add, Anne, things you remember? Well, I can tell you that um, when the fair was established in the junction, uh, Essex Center Grange had about 50 shares of stock. Yep. And they voted to sell it to their members. Mm -hmm. I think they voted to sell 42 shares or something. That's about right, yes. Um, and that's how I ended up with a share of stock because my parents and I bought stock. Yep. And Will Wool, who is a member of Essex Center, was the director of the fair for years and years and years. And we had a lot of uh, members that were superintendents for various exhibits. And I believe maybe the late 40s, I know it was into the 50s, Essex Center Grange ran a food booth underneath the grandstand Oh, for yeah. several years. Yep. And one of our Grange members was a chef at Howard Johnson's. Mm -hmm. And I can remember going with my father to Howard Johnson's to mm -hmm. get pies. And the, the crates are probably still there. When I was in there the last time, they were, you know, like this that held about yep. 10 pies. Yep. And bringing them back to the fairgrounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where was Howard Johnson's? Uh, down on Chubber. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Hojo, on the corner. Um, <coughs> yeah. I, I saw a wonderful documentary um, last winter on PBS about the Grange in Vermont. I mm -hmm. wonder if anyone else saw it. It was wonderful about the sur surviving chapters and, and yes. yep. rituals and traditions of the Grange. It was mm -hmm. really wonderful. The, uh, the Grange does well where there are less distractions, uh, urban distractions. If you get out into the country, countryside, there's probably less to do, less to get, be distracted by other stuff. So the Granges will do well there. We, we work hard to be relevant and serve, I meaning that that's our thing now, we got to serve the public, help out where we can. Anything else? Any other questions? Well, that's my presentation.